All right, so a couple of updates basically since last week, since the demo where we ran into a few limitations and issues. I've been working on those. Let me walk you through it. So let's start with workflows as activities, and then we'll continue with the running child workflow, and then we'll go through the bugs. Okay, so I got two solutions open. One is the workflow server, the other one the designer. Both are starting. Let's sign into the designer. And then last week we talked about input and output. So let me create a new composite activity. We'll call it sum. Actually, let me start from scratch. We'll create a new composite activity called sum. And the goal of this activity is to take in two values, two numeric values, add them together and then return the result. So then uh, this is like a reusable composite activity created using the designer. And the first thing you need to do in order to make a workflow usable as an activity is to enable the setting here. Usable as activity needs to be set to yes. Then we declare two inputs, value A and B, with one output called sum. And then we will do the calculation using a JavaScript activity. So we'll return get value a plus gets value B, and then we'll assign the output directly to the sum output. So its output will directly be assigned to the output of this composite activity. We'll publish this. We, uh, upon publishing, we'll see the composite activity appear in the activity picker. So now we can create a new workflow. So here we have a new workflow and we'll use this activity here. And then we can configure its inputs. So we, we defined two inputs, A and B. So this would be five and seven, for example. And then this is the output we defined. And this one we need to capture using a variable. So let's create one. We'll call it the sum. And then we'll assign the output to that new variable, the sum, like that. And now that we have this variable, we can do something with it, like writing it to the HTTP response. So let's use liquid. We could also use JavaScript, doesn't matter, but here we are going to use Liquid. And then in order to access workflow variables using Liquid, you need to access the variables object and then the variable name like this, like that. All right, so let's publish this workflow and capture the definition ID, and then we'll run it using Postman. So here we have the execute uh, endpoint of workflow definitions. Here we'll paste in the Definition ID, we can ignore the input. That's just an experiment. All right, now when I hit send, we see the output result 12. So that entire thing worked. So that's the, um, that's one way to reduce output from a composite activity. What I did here was bind the output of the JavaScript activity directly to the output of the composite activity. But I also added a new activity called set workflow output to do, this, to do that explicitly. And that might be useful in case you want to get, uh, get some value from someplace else that's not made available through an output of, a, of another activity. Maybe it's a hard coded value or maybe just an expression directly here in the output value. That's also a possibility. Whatever the case may be, we can use this one as well to set the output. So we can select the output from this field here. And then here we define the output. So let's say we return 42. I'll connect these together so that this sub workflow just executes. But this, even though this is set to the output, this should be overridden when this activity executes next. So let's see that that works as well. So we'll publish this one. And then we need to also update the workflow using this thing because currently it's using version one but we just made an update to the sum work, uh, composite activity, which is now at version two. And, all, and we could consider updating usages or activity instances on workflows automatically. It can, because it can be dangerous because you could be changing behavior that you may want to test in different workflows. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's better for the user to, for this to be an explicit action. Uh, and of course we can create some tooling to automate that task uh, but but for now in this initial version you will have to go into your workflow definitions that use your composite activities and then manually upgrade so now it's upgraded and then when you upgrade you basically change the setting on the activity which means you changed the workflow 
And whenever you make a change to the workflow, it will create a draft if there isn't already a draft. So make sure to publish this change as well. All right, so now it's published. Now when we execute, it should, I would expect 40 two as a result, but uh, clearly that didn't happen. So either I introduced the bug today or or maybe it was there before. I will look into that. Just let us let me quickly double check a few things. So here we do set output to sum, return this value. Let me just clear this out. Maybe there's some something going on here where the output of the previous activity isn't overwritten by this one for whatever reason, but uh, I will figure that out. For now we'll try it just to, again by up updating this version again here. We do publish and now it works. Okay, so we found a new bug, but that's okay. I'll fix it. All right, so I also wanted to show this uh, versioning system that's that, that works the way it works right now. But as I mentioned, we want to make it easier in future iterations. And one important thing is, is visual indication. So without knowing about this system, new users wouldn't be aware of it. So one idea I have is to show little, little badge, if you will, little badge with maybe an exclamation mark or something like that, something to draw your attention so that you can click on it and then show the same badge on the version tab. So that you know how to click on it and then then you'll you should see what's what's expected from you to do but this also ties a little bit into the holistic validation story that that i have in mind as well that is producing output from composite activities but it also works if you are just creating a child workflow and you invoke it as a as a workflow and not as an activity like like i've been doing here so let me show that as well. For that, I'll create two new workflows. One would be the child workflow and then a parent workflow running the child workflow. So let's start with the child workflow first. And this child workflow will just produce some output, which we'll define here. We'll call it output one. It will be a string. Actually, let's call this a message. So this child workflow will return a message. So we'll assign a value to this output. We'll say, Hello. We published this workflow and now we'll create the parent workflow, which we'll call parent workflow. We'll create a variable to capture the output from the child workflow. So we'll call that child output, which is of type object because workflows, when they return an output, that's always a dictionary of outputs. And one entry in this, this output will be the message, as we'll see. So let's do something with that result. First, we need to invoke the child workflow. So we'll set it to child workflow. That's the workflow definition asked for here. Here we get the result. This will be, this is an object which will be a an, an dynamic object, like an expando object. So let's print it out to the console. So here I had a right line activity. One thing I forgot is that whenever you dispatch a workflow by default, it will not wait for completion. You need to explicitly check wait for completion Christian here maybe i'm not sure if it's easy to do to visually distinguish between asynchronous and uh, synchronous activities so is it possible for example if wait for completion is active there will be some visual indication in the activity itself this one is going to wait that's um that's not a bad idea actually to visually indicate that an activity will be blocking or not that's yeah. uh, certainly a possibility Publish workflows hanging that had to do with basically a deadlock situation and the same goes for for this issue where we try to start add two two triggers to the workflow and each following their own path when we tried it kept spinning the postman progress indicators kept spinning and that was because of a, a deadlock that i have fixed which means if we now create a new workflow and let's add two endpoints so let's call this one route one this one route two and then we'll do a response so this one will go into this activity and this one into this one and here we'll write route one and here we'll say route two all right so now we should be able to try and access this one the, maybe the, the tenth time that i just forget to set these activities to can start workflows so this is route one works and then route two works as well so that's that scenario is fully supported having multiple triggers of, of course this will create two separate workflow instances one will go through this and that that's a, a start to end workflow instance and this one created a separate workflow instance as well so that's this one and this one publish workflow is hanging so that had to do with the 
event and policy event activities. So if you remember, I think it was you who asked the question, what happens if your child workflow starts with a, a blocking activity? Yeah. So let's see what happens. Let's say we, we use the sum and we'll start this one with an event. I will call this the, uh, we'll name this event begin sum. So what should happen when this activity executes, it will encounter this activity, which would then create a bookmark and suspend execution of this path. And then only once we trigger the system with this event, should this one resume, right? So we will we publish this change. And now we'll go back to this workflow here, which uses the sum. We'll update it to the latest version like this, publish this one. And now we'll see what happens when we execute this workflow. So we'll hit send. We have an instance ID and in the console out, we shouldn't see much interesting information and we should see the workflow instance being running. So if we look at the details here and we look at the journal, we see that the workflow started, this flow chart started and some has started, but it's not finished, it started. None of these have finished. So we're basically blocked here. So we're going to trigger this, this one to JSON and provide some empty object. This is because of a recent update to fast endpoints library. Now it requires you to at least send the content type. And, and when you do, you need to provide a val valid JSON object. So, all right. So this received an OK. This one, we tried to write an HP response, which obviously is not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work because it's using dispatcher, which internally uses a service bus. Let me just change the activity for a write line so we can see that it just works. All right, sending this one again. Not this one. We should first start the workflow. Start it. And now we will trigger the event. Then we should see in the in the console the sum, which we see here. The sum is 42. And then, of course, we should see the workflow instance being finished with all the events here. So we see all of these activities have completed. I just demoed how events work, but not how to publish the event from a workflow. Let's do that as well. So here, what we could do is because we know some has an event and that in order to resume that event, we need to publish an event. So we should be able to do something like this. Let's say we have a start note, which is just a starting milestone. It doesn't do anything doesn't have any actual functionality, but it allows us to do a, a fork. So what we could do is do it like this. We will introduce a small delay here. So what this will do is we'll, it will schedule both activities um, because we don't know what it, if this one is going to be executed first or this one. So we'll do a small delay here. Let's say of just one second, non-blocking and then from here, we'll, because we know this one will be blocking because internally it will be waiting for that event, we'll publish that event. So we'll use the publish event activity like this. And the event name was begin sum. Yeah, so like that. And then, then nothing. So this will just publish the event and that will then resume this activity, which will then ultimately resume this one. So effectively, it means as soon as we start the workflow one second later because this has a delay of one second we should see this right line executing the sum so let's keep an eye out on the console and let me change the block level to warning again so that it's not as noisy all right so we go back to the execute endpoint we'll let's just make sure we have the right definition id which i think we have yeah okay I click send and I now switch quickly to the console here. And after about a second, we indeed see the sum is 42. So we didn't have to manually publish the event because we did that from the workflow. And of course, this publish event can be invoked from any workflow and it will affect all workflow definitions and instances that are either, you know, where the event is used as a trigger or as a blocking activity. All of these will be invoked if, of course, if they match the event name and the correlation ID if specified. So that one works as well. Uh, very, very nice and interesting. And I think it opens the possibility to build a workflow library, a reusable library, especially with now that we can pass inputs and outputs to the reusable workflows. I think uh, there are many use cases where, for example, uh, we are building certain calculations that we need to use uh, multiple times. 
and we just need to reuse it in several places and maybe once the logic is changed we can keep adding it so it's it, it really helps to start building this kind of library of workflows that are reusable redistributable you know with version control as well exactly yeah that's a great summary and, and our work one of the common thing is that there are some calculations that are domain specific for example so industrial calculations so it applies to many kinds of industries or many kinds of applications, but with some tweaks. So and if you do it in code, it is not really easy to maintain. But if you see it visually in a nice representation in this workflow, and you can evolve it over time if you start adding some new conditions, some new logics. And to be able to reuse that and build very complex workflows on top of it, it it's really powerful. It can yeah. evolve, the, you know organic way and everybody will be able to use it not just the developers who are able to do the coding it has really come a long way and it's in a very good shape as you can see that yeah for sure so what i want to do is the engine should just be able to execute dpm annotation uh, but also the designer should support it but we don't have to recreate it ourselves we should be able to embed an actual dpmn modeler directly yeah that would be really interesting because I have seen some consultants who just, you know, spend a lot of time building these DPNN, you know, the designs. But at the end of the day, it's not executable until you convert it to some application. So if you can just import that, convert it to a workflow, then it's a, it's a big win. Mm-hmm.